Well, hey, y'all, I'm Melanie Red, and I want to welcome you to Ordinary Women, Extraordinary God. We work in tandem with the ministries of Love We're Finding, and it's our desire to encourage you to walk without fear of the future. And this is our video format now. We've got podcasts, we've got emails, we've got social media, but this is our candid conversations with some of the people that I think are precious that I want you to meet. And so I want you to get a cup of coffee or a cup of tea or get some water and come join us because we're just going to have a conversation today with a precious friend of mine. Her name is Rachel Adams, and we are actually online friends and we met in real life. And uh, I love her spirit. She's beautiful. She has a beautiful spirit and she has a heart to encourage women. And so Rachel, welcome. We are so glad you're here today. Hi, it's a joy to be with you as always. I've already had a fun time talking with you even before we hit record. So thanks for having me. It is fun. And it was fun to get to meet you last year. We were at a a podcaster's conference in uh, Nashville and Mm -hmm. I got to meet her. She she said, hey, and it was like, I know you. (laughs) And it's really fun that that we're real people and we Mm -hmm. really do live in real life, right? (laughs) I know because I had had you on my podcast and it's funny because, and then you can see people online, but you actually do look the same in person. Okay. Good, I'm glad I do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's really bad when people look different. You're like, are you like, sure that's you? That you? <laughs> your, your hair is a different color. <laughs> a lot of filters. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know. I, it's funny. My, I have to tell them myself, I used to overdo the filters. Mm-hmm. And I know I, I saw a girl out one night. She said, Melanie, you look a lot better online than you do in real life. And I thought, <laughs> oh, I got to quit using my filters. And so uh, now I've lightened those things like crazy, but it is easy. Because it's fun when you start messing with all the things now that we can do online, right? (laughs) You know, even my my sister-in-law, she was at the grocery the other day and she had no makeup on and somebody ran into her and they're like, they said, are are you feeling okay? She's (laughs) like, yeah, I'm fine. I just don't have my makeup on. And isn't it just funny how, you know, we we always do try to put on our, our good face, our best face. And then like, just to be authentic and natural in our true selves. There's yeah. something refreshing about that, isn't there? I think that's what's really fun. Have you noticed you see those shows? I think some of the magazines do it where they try to catch the movie stars without any makeup on. And some of them look really good. Some of them you're like, who is that? Who is that? I know that, that would be, that would be me. We, we no. I, did, I did take a shower today for you today. <laughs> good. I'm glad you did. <laughs> well, I know when I go out with my hat on and no makeup, people don't know who I am. And so it's, I guess we all need that a little bit, but it, it's, it's fun that we can be online and that we can kind of visit like this. And so tell us, tell everybody just a little bit about you. Just, just introduce yourself to us today. So I'm a small town, Kentucky girl, born and raised in the small little lake town of Somerset, Kentucky. Um, I moved away in college, met my husband the very first day of college, and then he proposed to me uh, the night of my graduation. And then so we've been married together for 20 and um, married for 16 years, and we have two children. Will and Kate, who were um, named before the royal couple got married. Um, but so they're both they're both in middle school, and so my days are pretty ordinary. <laughs> they, you, have two, you have two children in middle school, girl. I do, I do. Oh. Uh, sixth grade and seventh grade. So we're not doing that. Uh, they're both just really involved in extracurricular activities and uh, sports and, you know, homework and all the, all the things, but gosh, it's a joy to, to parent them and be their mom and uh, be a wife and, you know, church member and sister and daughter and all the things, um, all the roles that most of us really have. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this. Our, our, what we tell people in our title, it used to be our motto and we flipped, we were women living courageously and we flipped the script a little bit. Now we're calling ourselves ordinary women, extraordinary God. And so I like to ask women, how are you just an ordinary girl? One of the girls regular, if we sat down with you over coffee, what would, what would we find out about you? Yeah, you would definitely say I'm super ordinary. Um, I, you know, my days are made up just like everybody else's. It's, it usually starts with a cup of coffee and, uh, you know, some quiet time with the Lord, a walk of, with my dogs, packing my kids' lunches, few errands like groceries and cleaning up dishes and making beds and sweeping floors and, um, you know, doing homework with my kids and attending ball games and going to church events. I mean, that, those are things that probably make up the majority of our days. And so that, that, that is, you know, and that's been kind of my, my, my kind of internal struggle. It's like, God, I want my life to, to matter and make a big difference, but yet my life feels really 
ordinary and mundane and routine, you know, can, can the two coincide? Um, and, and I feel like he continues to speak to my heart that yes, yes, they absolutely can. I do my best work with the ordinary. <laughs> I think you're so right. Cause my days, a lot of times are filled with the same things there. I'm writing or I'm putting a, together a blog post or I'm working on social media or I'm emailing people and working in an office. And, you know, mm-hmm. a lot of people, that's what they do. They take care of their kids or they work in an office or they're in school or whatever you're doing. But we all have regular, ordinary days, most days. Most of us are not on some stage being clapped for and cheered for and having our pictures made. And, you know, it it may look glamorous sometimes as people Mm. look in to people Mm. that stand up on the podium. But I I think if you ask, even those people that are well-known, like like someone like Priscilla Shower, she would tell you she's having coffee and doing laundry and making supper. And (laughs) that's what we do, right? It's the truth. (laughs) And honestly, as I was looking into scripture, I I saw like even Jesus himself, if you really, I mean, yes, he lived and he was, he's a big miraculous God and he, he worked in miraculous ways, but he walked everywhere he went and he, you know, he shared meals with people and went to funerals and went to weddings and washed feet and held children and prayed for people. You know, like if you really think about the ways that he kind of lived his life, those are really ordinary ways too. Those are ways that we can, you know, think same things that we can do even still today. Yeah, I think you're right. And, and maybe so much of it is no matter where you are today, those of y'all that are watching what you're doing matters. And and me taking my parents to the doctor, I have two parents that are in not so great health and carting them somewhere or um, talking to one of my kids or taking care of something for my husband or doing anything that we do, talking to somebody that brings something to your door or being kind to someone online. That's, that's life. The simple mm-hmm. things are the things. <laughs> they, these moments are the moments. This is life. Most of life is not the mountaintops. Mm-hmm. And so I think you're you're making a great point that um, I saw a sign. We stayed at this little cabin raining. I had a trip last year and it said collect moments. Mm-hmm. And that's what I want to do more of is just collect the moments and enjoy the moments and live in the now instead mm-hmm. of waiting for whatever is to come. Yeah. Every moment matters for sure. Every moment matters. That's good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think we could write on that. I think that that's oh, no. cool. well, <laughs> I was even listening to a song today. It was, and it was, um, it was God is in the details Yeah, and it's so true. I mean, yeah. he's, he's going to use every ounce of our lives, right? Everything yeah. is preparation. Everything is training ground. He's teaching us and sanctifying us and molding us more and more into to him. And like the key is, is like including him in our days, right? Partnering with him. He can turn every, any ordinary moment into something extraordinary. Yeah. Because you don't want to get to the end and I'm, I'm closer than you, uh, but you don't want to get to the, to the end of your life and go, I missed it. <laughs> All those things I was doing, that was it. And mm. this side of eternity, it is those moments. And so I think that's a great word, even though we are ordinary and life is simple. It doesn't have to be ordinary in a boring sort of way. God can use those simple moments in our lives. So that's a, that's a great word. Let me ask you this. How has God been extraordinary to you? When you think about what is so sweet about your relationship with the Lord, what do you appreciate? Gosh, you know, I, and I'm even, I, I can take him for granted so much, but really just the fact that he, um, his Holy Spirit resides in me. <laughs> And then you and then all of us. And when we're believers, I mean, there's something just so miraculous and extraordinary about that. Just that alone, that he is always with us. He will never leave us or forsake us. He is always present. Mm -hmm. Um, And that we have the fruit of his spirit available to us at every single moment. Like that's extraordinary. (laughs) You know, that's what makes us, that's what makes us special. And so, and I take that for granted so much and, and forget that. And so I'm just so appreciative of that and just who he calls me and all of us as his children. Like we are part of his family. It's not just eternity now or, you know, someday it's like, he's with us right now. And there's, there's, you know, here while we're on earth, we can start experiencing what he has for us right now, living in light of our inheritance right now. And so that's extraordinary that we get to part for whatever reason, as unfathomable as it may seem, we get to partner with him in this life and do his work in the world. And like, he doesn't, it's amazing. He would even need us and use little ordinary people like us with ordinary objects and ordinary (laughs) jobs and ordinary talents. And, um, and, and that he would, he would use us to, to shape the rest of eternity. That's, that's, amazing to me. It is amazing. It is. I was reminded as you were saying that of this week, there's been a couple of times where it's just like been like the Holy Spirit has just, I've had that check. Don't do that. Don't say that. 
And I'm grateful. It's that sense. People are like, well, how do you know he's there? Because when you have that tug in your heart that says, don't say that, <laughs> or I wouldn't do that, or that's not a great idea. That's the spirit. Just checks, mm -hmm. little checks in your spirit. So that's a great reminder that he's within us. And he he sometimes kind of has to push a button and say, no, don't do that. <laughs> I just had a moment. Like, no, no, not that. <laughs> yeah, I just had a moment. Like you, were, um, I went to a, a lunch with some friends the other day and everybody was kind of talking and um, all of a sudden I I almost said something that would have been kind of gossipy or maybe judgmental. And then I stopped and they're like, no, no, no. What were you going to say? And I'm like, nope, the Holy Spirit zipped my lips. Like, I'm so glad that I just took a moment and and thought and obeyed before I spoke because I would have regretted it. Right. So yeah. it's like, it's daily. It's a daily yeah. reminder, a daily bread, a daily walk with him. It's for a sure. gift. It's a gift, that conviction and that sense of no, it happens to my, my husband and the kids often it'd be like, bite your tongue do not say that <laughs> so that's a good thing uh otherwise we'd be in a lot of trouble I'd be in a lot of trouble so I that is an extraordinary fact that we have him with us and that he directs us and guides us and never leaves us that's mm -hmm. a sweet promise um what are you looking forward to this year what are you excited about have you got some things going on projects or you taking mm -hmm. a trip or what what's happening in your world that you're excited about Gosh, a lot. You know, last year was a really big year for my family. We we lived in an RV. We built a house. Um, so we're actually in the new house that you can see. You you What's um earlier asked year? if there was <laughs> snow on the ground, but it's actually gravel because we're still like kind of in construction mode over here. Well, um, that room looks really good that we're seeing. <laughs> oh, well, you can tell I still need like, you know, some pictures on the wall. And it's okay. It looks very clean and fresh and everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah I'm, I'm hesitant to put the nails in the wall. You know, it's it very permanent. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, and then my, my first devotional released last year, a little goes a long way, 52 days to a significant life that released in October. And so this year, I'm just excited to continue to share it. Um, I've got, you know, I'm, I'm traveling to some places to speak and like some ladies conferences and churches. And so I'm really, really excited uh, just to steward that message well. I'm excited about that. And then um, as far as trips go, my in-laws for Christmas got us a cruise to go with my husband's, you know, sister and his parents and then us. Yeah. And I've never been on a cruise. Ah. Um, uh, so I'm really excited about awesome. that. Well, I'm, a little, I'm a little nervous because uh, I get motion sick. <laughs> Ah, you have to put all the little bracelets on and do all yes. the little behind the ear thing. And <laughs> yes, yeah, so it, it yeah. could be, I'm hoping it's wonderful um, yes. and that I, I, that I'm able to enjoy that and not be in the room the whole time. Oh, that sounds amazing. I'm sure it'll be great. And listen, we'll put uh, a link to, to the book, to your book and how people can find out more about that in the descriptions below. Um, and listen, as you're watching, if you have a question or a comment, put it in there. If you've been on a cruise, tell us about it. That'd be fun. Yes. Um, yes. But I will tell you, I say this almost every time. We like your comments. I love to hear back from people and know questions and ideas and what works. And if you've been on a cruise and you know what to do for dizziness, tell us that. Yes, please. <laughs> somebody's got a great, I'm sure somebody's got a great idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I'm excited about your book and we'll share that below. And so people can find out how to get a, a copy and tell us just kind of the essence of the book. Cause you told us that it's 52 devotions. What is that about two months? It's about, it's about is it one for every day for 52 yes. days? Okay. Yes, it, it can be, or you can do one a week, you know, for 52 yeah. weeks or whatever. Um, I, you know, it, and that's why when, when you reached out to have this conversation today, I, I told you like our, our hearts marry so well yeah. in this way, because that what we've been talking about already, this, this idea of feeling like, gosh, I'm just too ordinary. Uh, you know, my life is too insignificant to make a big difference, but yet I want to live a significant life. I want to matter. And so what I hope to to show women is, is that you already are living a significant life. You just don't realize that you are and that everything you do, the big and the small, that God is going to use it all. Yeah. Um, and, and the yeah. idea, you know, are, we just have this inherent significance apart from anything that we do. You know, God created us from dust. He created us from simple, something simple and small, and it's him that breathed life into us. And we're fearfully and wonderfully made. We're his workmanship. Um, but the key is, is in Ephesians 2.10 tells us that we're his workmanship, but we're created to do good works. And so while we're here, you know, he is going to use every interaction, every conversation, every letter you write, every invitation, every meal you share, every prayer you pray, he's going to use that. I so firmly believe that. And I just hope to show everybody that there's not necessarily more for you to do, but just trust the little that you're already doing. That's a good word. 
And uh, and sometimes I think we're going to look back. I mean, I have this happen all the time. And and I, I think John Piper was the one that said it. God's always doing a thousand things and we may see two or three. Mm-hmm. Or he may have said 10,000 things, but a lot of things. And we see two or three. And, I, and you know, every once in a while, I feel like he'll peel back and let us see or hear something that he's doing through us. And I'll have a conversation or I'll get a text or I'll get an email. But it's just every once in a while. And it's really sweet, though, when he lets us know. And I think it's probably true for all of us. Every once in a while, someone says thank you or someone tells you they appreciate you or someone tells you that something you did meant a lot to them. But in the meantime, we're faithful, right? We just keep doing it and keep showing up. And God can use it any ordinary. He can use a regular old day of the week Mm -hmm. and regular activity that we're doing being faithful, right? Yeah, absolutely. I think so often we want to see the immediate fruit and the immediate result or immediate outcome of what we're doing. And like you said, occasionally we get to see that. And it usually happens, at least I notice at just the right time. I'll get that encouraging text or comment or letter (laughs) or phone call or whatever, right when I need it, when I'm especially discouraged. Um, just kind of back to that daily bread, that manna that we need to keep going to persevere. Um, But I think more often than not, I think so much of our unseen lives, you know, this in, intangible nature of what we do often, I think when we get to heaven one day, we, we, we'll we see all the harvest, you know, but I think we just have to trust that we just keep planting those seeds, letting people, uh, uh, maybe other people water it and then trust God with the harvest and the outcome. Good. It's interesting. I was in, um, I went back to school not that many years ago and got my master's in seminary and I had a professor and he used the most interesting visual because there's a verse that says we see dimly. And he said, it's almost like we see through this really thick glass. And, but when we get to heaven, we're going to see clearly. (laughs) And I think life sometimes it's like, it's through this beveled, you know, really thick glass and we can't see it all. But one day that's going to be removed and we're going to be able to see much more clearly. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. Uh, Yeah. Well, let me ask you this. What else has God been teaching you? Is there a book you're reading, a verse, something you're studying in the Bible? Is there something you're really excited about that God's just been showing you in recent days? And you're like, oh, I want to share this. Yeah. I tell you, one of the most impactful, I co-lead a Bible study at my church and we just finished the gospel on the ground by Christy McClelland. And we just started her Jesus when women study too. We're only on session three of that, but I don't, if you're not familiar with Christy McClellan, she is one of the best Bible to study teachers that I have ever studied under. And this gospel on the ground, it, it just, it shifted my heart and really transformed the way that I want to live my life that I, you know, yes, sometimes we feel like our life is too ordinary and we're not making a difference, but that, that there is still, you know, that's how the early church started. It started, the Holy Spirit came upon the disciples and then they started to just share the gospel with the people around them. And then it grew. And now we're still talking about it today, but that's still our role in our lives today. However, we're going to do that. And however, we're um, wherever we're going and whoever we're around to continue to tell people about the love of Jesus Christ so that they can come to know and love him too. And so I think it was one of the most transformational studies I've ever done as far as wanting to change the way that I live my life. So I would highly, highly recommend it. I'll I'll link that below. Somebody mentioned to her to me recently. I've not heard her speak, Mm -hmm. uh, but I know she's real involved with Lifeway and that they sponsor her. And so I'll, I'll mention some of that below. I'll put some resources below, but I love that idea. And that's a great word. Absolutely. And she really teaches the Bible from a, a Middle Eastern lens because, you know, we're so prone to, to read it through our Western lenses, which is where, you know, we are. And that's what we know and kind of through that perspective. And so it just really shapes the way um, you read the Bible. It's changed the way that I, the context in which I'm, I'm reading the Bible. And that's been really, really helpful as Sounds well. Sounds really good. Well, we'll mention that one below. So pe- people want to find out more, they can. Um, well, how do people get in touch with you? If they want to reach you, what is the very best way? How do you like to be contacted? Because all of us like to be contacted. Is it through a website or on a certain social media channel? What's your preference? Um, I would say, honestly, I would say email if you really want an, an answer or <laughs> okay. like, a you know, because I really do believe every interaction and every conversation matters. And so, and then I know he connected us, you know, who, who would have thought that, you yeah, know, I know. Ago, this is fun. Getting, <laughs> yeah, getting this opportunity to yeah. continue the conversation today. So um, my email is rachelkeckadams at gmail.com. And then 
of course, social media is kind of easy for people. So at Rachel Adams author, and then my website is rachelkadams.com. Okay. Well, we'll put all those links below because it's just easy for people. You'll be able to, especially if you're watching this on YouTube, you just hit, hit more under the description and you can go and you can click to anything and it won't take you away from this video. And so we would love for you. I'm sure Rachel would love to hear from you. And so if you have a question for her or you want her to speak at your church, you want to know about her Bible study, I encourage you to get in touch with her. Um, let me ask you one more thing. Because whenever I do this, and I'm sure you're a podcaster, you know, I like this question at the end because often I'll talk to somebody and they're like, I had something else. <laughs> so, <laughs> is there anything else that you'd really like to share? Yeah, I mean, I, and I just, I guess this, this idea of ordinary people and ordinary objects. And, you know, I, I read the Bible. I, I joke that I wrote 52 days to a significant life and I feel like I could have written 365 because this idea of God using little ordinary people for extraordinary things is all throughout his word. I mean, from the very beginning, you look at Abraham and, and Sarah, they were old and barren and impotent. And that's who God promised to make the generations that are going to number more than the stars is in the sky and grains of sand on the seashore. And you look at, you know, David was the youngest in his family. Joseph was the youngest in his family. Gideon, you know, he, they dwindled down his army. Esther was an orphan girl. Mary was a young unmarried girl with a willing heart. And the reality is, and I mean, even look at the disciples that, that Jesus chose to follow him, fishermen and um, shepherds and zealots and tax collectors. I mean, just people doing their ordinary everyday activities. And so we oftentimes, well, I think we'll even read the Bible, like a big highlight reel, but we forget that they just were doing daily ordinary activities too. So just be faithful with what God has given you and who he has placed in front of you and um, continue just to, to give, give your yes to the Lord, be willing and be obedient to him and watch him take your little offering a, a long way. That's such a good word. I love that. Thank you for sharing that. I, as you were talking, I was thinking about, I, uh, I like Christine Kane is a speaker and a writer and she's an encourager. I think that's gotta be her gift, but I remember hearing her, maybe she was speaking at a conference. I was attending and she's told the story about when she was brand new Christian she went to church and she just wanted something to do <laughs> and so have you heard this and so no. I mean she speaks to millions of people a year now but the way she got her start was they said well Christine we need somebody to clean out this closet and mm. that's how she started she cleaned bathrooms she cleaned closets she did sweat floors and I really think God honors faithfulness and humility and willingness just to clean closets and sweep floors and clean bathrooms. And so if your heart is to minister and you want God to use you, you just do all you know to do. You do all he's given you to do. He knows your address. He knows your phone number. <laughs> he can find you. And um, I think he just really does reward faithfulness. So that's what you're, you kind of made me think of is mm -hmm. just keep doing those simple things that he's given you to do. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus was a servant, right? I mean, he was the ultimate servant and there was no job that was below him. I mean, he, he washed his disciples feet. Yeah. And I think, you know, that he says, go and do likewise. And so that is such a beautiful reminder um, yeah. to me as well, that whatever is in front of us, nothing's too low. Maybe we do need to stoop low. Um, and then, you know, that that's maybe where we find the biggest blessing. Amen. That's been a good word. Well, thank you so much for being with us today. This is, excuse me, I thought you thought you were going to do it. I'm doing it. Uh, we live in Allergyville. It changes. The weather changes 20 degrees every day. So yes, <laughs> you're too. Um, but thank you for sharing with us, Rachel. This has been so fun and it's been refreshing. And I believe anybody that has been will watch or is watching will be so encouraged and be reminded that what we do matters and that laundry matters, that dinner you're fixing matters, rocking that baby matters, walking that dog, all of it. Uh, if you do it for the glory of God, there's a verse that says, whatever you do, you do for the glory of God. And so I believe he honors our faithfulness just to show up and do what we're supposed to do. So thank mm -hmm. you for reminding us. This has been good today. We really appreciate you being with us. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a, a, my pleasure, actually. Thank you so much. Well, good. Well, ladies, join us again. And if there's men watching, you're allowed. We don't, we don't complain. Uh, <laughs> but we are so glad you, you joined us today. And our prayer is that you'll just be encouraged that as you watch and you realize we're regular women in regular places, just having a conversation about the God that we love and we serve, that you'll be refreshed and renewed and encouraged today. And we are ordinary women, but we're pursuing an extraordinary God and he adores you and he wants wants us to live without fear of the future. So we'll join you again soon. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you again, Rachel. This is fun. Thank you so much.